We're at the hospital in Shebergan, where they keep the wounded. And an American has been found in the basement of Kalijangi prison and brought here. The American's name. Huh? John, the father's name. Open your eyes. Huh? He's pretty hypothermic. You know, the problem with these people, they've been standing in freezing water for 20 hours, and they were on the back of a truck, and it was freezing cold. When I arrived in London, I hear that 86 had walked out of that basement that day on Saturday, and that one of them was this American Taliban, John Walker. And I think that was surprising to everyone. So what made you decide to leave the basement? It was the last day. What happened was yesterday, they, they had bombed us with airplanes, they had shot missiles, they had thrown grenades, they had shot us with all types of guns, they had poured gas on us and burned us, they had done everything you can imagine. So the last thing they did was they, they poured water down into the basement. They wanted to fill it up with water. And then he wants to talk, then he keeps talking to me. Was your goal to be Shaheed or martyred? Yeah, it's the goal of every Muslim. Was it your goal though? Huh? Was it your goal at that time? I'll tell you, to be honest, every single one of us, without any exaggeration, every single one of us was 100% sure that we would all be shahid, any shahid, mm -hmm. all be martyrs. But, you know, Allah chooses to take a person's life when he chooses, mm -hmm. and we have no control over it. He was the first face. He was the first person that we could sort of get our heads around. Because bin Laden was the bad guy, but we couldn't find bin Laden. And Mullah Omar was like number two, but we didn't have pictures of Mullah Omar. We didn't have him talking to us. And here was a guy who spoke perfect English, who told us exactly what he was doing. You know, professed his love for the Taliban, who we hated, told me how happy he was that he was lying there and in sort of an utter wretch of a human being after being starved and frozen and half dead. And he was basically the enemy saying, screw you, you know? And he was an American at that. I mean, it just, people's blood boiled. But what happened was we spent the night under the basement, then they let us out one by one. They would search each one of us, then they tied us up and they put us out on the lawn. So as they were taking us one by one, somehow they started fighting, with, starting with a grenade, then one of them grabbed a clash and a cart from one of the Dustin uh, Army forces. And uh, so the fighting began. So many of them held, they hid inside of their clothes uh, hand grenades which is uh, against what we had agreed upon. And this is against Islam. It's considered a major sin to break a contract that you've made, especially in military situations. As soon as the gunshots started, everybody stood up and ran. I ran maybe two meters, and I was shot in the and fell down. So the whole time I was just <laughs> in the basement and against the wall. He went to study Arab the Arab language in Yemen, and was not well liked by his classmates. He then went off to try to get more sort of fundamentalist training, and they rejected him. And then he went to Pakistan to a madrasa, which is normally populated by little kids reciting the Quran. And here's this big goofy guy, you know, studying the Quran. He went to join the Taliban. The Taliban said, well, you don't speak our language, you're no use to us, so go to the Ansar Brigades. He ends up being involved with Osama bin Laden and what we call the Al-Qaeda network. So the Arab uh, section of the Ansar is funded by Osama bin Laden. Also, the, the training camps that uh, the Arabs train in before they come to the front lines are funded by Osama bin Laden. And then gets turned in by his loyal Talib commanders and ends up in Kalijangi trying to surrender but ending up being sort of victimized by all that violence. And now he's going to be sort of a, a show trial over here for being a traitor. And then we find out later that one of the reasons he left home was because his father separated from his mother. And, and the stories in the press are that his father moved in with another man. That was sort of what launched him on his little hijira. You know? Was this what you thought it would be? Was, it, was this the right cause or the, the right place? exactly what I thought it would be.
He's yeah. an American citizen, right? Yeah. Well, right now you are a prisoner. All right. Of okay. who? Do you understand why? Of who? Prisoner of the American government? No, sir. Right now. All right. Right now you're a patient. Yeah. And the Americans are treating you. Yeah. Yeah. American yeah. doctors. Thank you. Okay. We'll, so we will move him to where we are staying tonight. Mazar Sharif was not the proudest hour for the Americans in this war. That was absolutely wrong. They lost a man and they called the bomb strike on themselves, basically. And then they found this guy. The battle was such a story, and that was totally eclipsed by the story of the two Americans. For the United States, anyway, it gave you a hero, Michael Spann, who dies in combat, the first KIA. And then you have John Walker, American Taliban. And then the tape surfaces of Spann actually trying to interrogate Walker, which is remarkable. To begin. Where do you have that? And Walker is very uncommunicative. He says nothing to them. Any journalist who saw the tapes was just shocked at how bad they were at interviewing people. I mean, it's amateurish. You know, this is not CIA trained operatives. You know, this is amateur hour. And in a strange way, they sort of threatened him with death. The problem is he needs to decide if he wants to live or die and die here. I mean, if you don't want to die here, he's going to die here, because we're just going to leave, and gonna, he's going to fucking sit in prison the rest of the fucking, you know, short life. It's his decision. The threats that they made to the Taliban could quite plausibly have helped set off the revolt. If you tell people that they're all going to die unless they talk to the CIA, it completely undermines what Dostum had said about guaranteed security and so on. We can only help those guys who want to talk to us. We can only get the Red Cross to help so many guys. If they don't talk to us, we can't. We you, can't. Know, you know the people you're here, hey, look at me. You know the people that you're here working with are terrorists? <laughs> they killed other Muslims. There were several hundred Muslims killed in the bombing. They didn't even know each other at that time or that their fates would be so intertwined and it would become, in many ways, the story of the war.